In this video, we're diving into 11 millionaire habits that have completely transformed my life. And we're not just scratching the surface with the usual wake up at 5 a.m. or drink more water. No, we're going to be going deeper. These are rock solid habits and principles that when you bring them into your life, they can really skyrocket your chances of success. Trust me on this one. When I started implementing some of these habits and principles into my own life, everything shifted. So if you're ready to make some serious moves and see some real change, you're in the right place but let's not waste any more time and dive in first up is fail fast fail often now i know what you're thinking failure really but just hear me out the fear of failure stops so many of us dead in our tracks that we don't try that new hobby or we don't launch that new business idea that we've been dreaming about because we're scared that we will fall flat on our faces and the truth is every single successful person out there has failed, not just once, but over and over again. Successful millionaires and billionaires embrace failure because if you're not failing, you're not experimenting and you're probably not trying hard enough. So this video right here that I'm recording is a bit of a risk for me. It's different to what I usually post. There's a chance that it might not resonate with anyone and it could be a big failure. But what if it does resonate with everyone? What if it goes viral? It could be my best video yet, but I don't know until I try something new. And if I let the fear of failure hold me back, I'd never try anything new. So you need to learn to embrace failure, not be scared of it. And the key is to fail fast, learn from it, and then move on. And before you know it, you'll have such a big success that people would have forgotten about all of the failures along the way. The next one is do something uncomfortable every day. Now this practice has been a game changer for me and it's all about pushing yourself outside your comfort zone on a regular basis. I've recently committed to getting in an ice bath every day and even though I do it regularly, I still dread it every single time. But the feeling afterwards is Honestly, you cannot explain how amazing it feels afterwards, but it's not even about the physical benefits. It's the mental victory, knowing that I've conquered this challenge early in the day. And on the odd days where I do skip it, the rest of my day just seems to fall apart. I'm less likely to go to the gym and I'm less likely to eat healthily as well. So start by identifying something that you dread, but you know is good for you. So if you hate running, make it your mission to go for a 10 minute run every morning. Maybe you can't stand the idea of an ice bath. Well, that's probably your cue to give it a go. Or maybe you hate the Stairmaster in the gym. Well, it's time to step up quite literally. And yet all of those activities boost your health but that's not the main point here. It's all about forcing yourself to tackle the things that you'd rather avoid to build that self-discipline and show yourself that anything really is possible. This habit really is key to getting rid of those self-limiting beliefs that hold most people back. By consistently pushing yourself to do the things that you don't like doing, you're training that self-discipline, you're stepping out of your comfort zone and you're building resilience. And it starts small, maybe it's a three minute ice bath, but soon you're gonna be tackling bigger challenges like public speaking or maybe starting a YouTube channel that you've always dreamed about. And a great tip which is helping me stay on track with my habits, including those pesky ice baths, is to download a habit tracking app. This allows you to gamify your daily habits. And since I downloaded the habit tracking app, I've not skipped a day in the ice bath because I don't want to break my streak. So I definitely recommend it. Moving on to the next one, which is harness the compound effect. Now, this is a true life changer that I wish I would have implemented sooner. It's a powerful principle that is the secret source to achieving massive success in your life, but also in your finances too. But what is the compound effect exactly? Well, it's all about how small actions, when repeated consistently over time, can lead to exponential results. So just imagine maybe improving your knowledge or your skills by just 1% each day. I know it doesn't sound like much, but those tiny gains add up over time. And by the end of the year, you would have made an improvement of over 3,700%. Whether it's fitness, learning a new language, or personal development, the compound effect works silently in the background, turning small daily habits into life-changing achievements. Now, when we apply this principle to finances, that's when things get really interesting. Starting small and investing a portion of your income might seem pretty pointless at first, but over time, thanks to compound growth, these investments start to snowball. And before you know it, what started off as a tiny little trickle could have turned into a substantial stream of wealth. And it doesn't matter whether you're a waiter or a CEO, the sooner you start investing, the better off you'll be thanks to compounding. 
If you're struggling to know where to invest your money, let me introduce you to today's sponsor, Money Farm. Money Farm is the leading digital wealth manager in the UK that can help you invest your money. They offer expertly managed portfolios where a team of experts are responsible for managing your investments and they've been around since 2011. So you can sit back knowing that your money is in good hands. Money Farm offer a variety of investment portfolios, but the one that I've been taking advantage of is a stocks and shares ISA, which allows you to invest up to £20,000 every year with tax-free growth. I only recently started putting money into stocks and shares ISA, and the only thing that I regret is just not starting sooner. Before this, I was just letting my money sit in the bank or wasting it on takeaway coffees. But now I feel content that I'm actually building my future. And another big reason why I'm a fan of Money Farm is because there's no hidden fees. Their pricing is clear and upfront. And this means that they focus on finding investment strategies that are cost effective, ultimately leaving more money in your pocket and in my pocket. So click the link below to head to Money Farm now to start investing with ease, transparency, and expert support. But that's not all. Money Farm have also got a great deal on for ISA season. They're offering up to £750 cash back when you invest or transfer your ISA to them. But you've got to be quick because you've only got until April 11th, 2024 to register for the offer. Okay, moving on to habit four, which is learn something new every day. Now, when I say learn something new every day, I don't mean that you have to master a new skill every day. What I'm talking about is just enriching your mind little by little every single day. It's about ending the day with at least one piece of knowledge that you didn't have when you started. It could just be a fun fact. It could be a life lesson. It could be a new word. The point is each nugget of information adds up, making you a more well-rounded person over time. Just look at some of the most successful people out there. For example, Warren Buffett, he spends a huge chunk of his day just reading and learning new things. And also Bill Gates, he goes for around 50 bucks every single year. These millionaires understand something crucial. Knowledge is the key to success. They're always learning, they're always growing, so it's no coincidence that they're some of the richest people in the world. And if you're like me, you might be saying, Liam, I don't have time to read, but that is not an excuse not to expand your knowledge. Great little tip is I used to listen to music every time I went to the gym, same old playlists every single day. Then I made one slight change. I just started listening to audiobooks instead. And it was a total game changer. It allowed me to obviously get fit while I was expanding my knowledge. So just work smarter, not harder. Obviously, it doesn't have to be an audio book at the gym. Find out what works for you that allows you to learn something new every day. It could just be a podcast during your commute to work. It could be an educational YouTube video while you're having a coffee. Or maybe it's just one page of a book before bed. Make learning a daily habit and just watch how it transforms your life just like it did mine. Next up, it's all about surrounding yourself with winners. You probably heard the saying that your network is your net worth. But there's actually a lot of truth in that. The people you hang around with, the ones you spend most time with, they have got a huge influence on your chances of success. And it's not just a nice idea, it's actually backed by solid research. There was actually a study in 2007 where researchers found that in friendships where both people consider themselves to be friends of each other, if one of them becomes obese, the chance of the other one becoming obese shoots up by 171%. That is massive, and it just goes to show you that the people around us impact us way more than we actually think they do. If you think about it, millionaires aren't just smart with their money. They're smart with who they spend their time with. They surround themselves with people who are driven and people who are positive because they know that success breeds success. So when you're around people who are winning in life, you're obviously more likely to pick up on their habits, their mindset, and also their approach to challenges. For instance, if your close friends are the kind of people who set goals and talk about investments and they're always looking for ways to improve themselves, it's like you're getting a free lesson every time you hang out with them. You'll talk about what's working. You'll talk about what's not working. You'll push each other to do better. And before you know it, you're not just dreaming about being successful, you're actually living it. And it's not just about money or fitness. This idea applies to everything from staying positive to staying fit to staying motivated. If your friend is excited about a new business idea, that excitement is contagious. You'll start seeing opportunities everywhere too. Or if your friend is training for a marathon, suddenly those morning jogs don't seem like such a bad idea. So here's what you want to do. You want to take a good look at your circle and think, are they lifting you up or are they holding you back? And just remember that you're the average of the five people you spend most time with. So you've got to make those five people count. Choose the winners. And before you know it, you'll be one of them too. Habit six is fasting. 
Now, the next one might not be for everyone, but trust me, it has the power to transform both your health and your mind, and it's fasting. So fasting is just when you restrict the hours when you eat. Despite what a lot of people think, fasting isn't just about weight loss. It can help with weight loss, but I mainly use it to enhance my mental clarity and self-discipline. I've been doing it on and off for years, but I usually just stick to the simple 16-8 fast, which just means that I'm allowed to eat within an eight-hour window. So usually I stop eating at 8 p.m. at night, and then I won't have my next meal until 12 noon the next day. And not only does that stop me just mindlessly snacking on junk food in the evenings, which I am quite guilty of, but I also find myself being more sharper and more focused in the mornings when I'm actually in a fasted state. And it's not just me. Fasting has been embraced by some of the most successful people out there. Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, he was well known for his fasting routines. He actually said that it boosted his creativity and focus. Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter, He's another big advocate for it. And also, we've now got Brian Johnson, the anti-aging expert who does intermittent fasting every day, and he says it helps reverse aging. So if you're looking for a way to boost both your physical health and your mental clarity, fasting might be the one for you. Next up is deep work. So this is a concept that I read about in the book called Deep Work by Cal Newport, but it has become a massive, important part of my productivity strategy. And all it is, it's just about focusing deeply on tasks that's free from distractions that allows me to fully concentrate and ultimately produce high quality work in less time. And deep work is so crucial in this current day and age that we're in because we've got so many distractions. We've got TikTok, we've got notifications, we've got emails, we've got phone calls, we've got messages. There's so much going on. So it's really, really valuable if you can focus deeply on your work. The personal benefits that I've experienced just from incorporating a few deep work sessions into my routine has been off the scale. Not only has my productivity seen a massive boost, but it's all about the actual quality of my work because that has increased tenfold as well. Think about it, by setting aside dedicated time for deep work, you're not just getting more work done, you're actually increasing the quality of the work you produce. So it's all about working smarter, not harder. And this practice has reshaped how I approach tasks and projects, making it possible to achieve a lot more in a lot less time with a much bigger impact. But one of the biggest challenges to actually getting into a deep work session is this little flow state killer here, your mobile phone. So if you find yourself constantly being distracted by notifications and funny cat videos, which is actually preventing you from getting into a deep work session, then I recommend that you check out this app called Forest. It's just a simple focus timer, but it's got a really cool idea that allows you to grow a tree on your phone. So you plant a tree, and then you leave it to grow. And while that tree's growing on your phone, you can't touch your phone and you can actually focus on work. And if you actually go on your phone and go off the app, then the tree will die. And this just encourages you to focus on deep work and get stuff done. Next is practice gratitude daily. Now, this is something I've heard a lot of people talk about over the years. I've read it in self-help books. I've watched it on YouTube videos. And honestly, I didn't used to get it. I used to think, what's the point in writing about what I'm grateful for? I want to focus on my goals. I want to focus on what's coming next. But I've actually tried it. And the more I do it, the more I realize that gratitude isn't just about saying thank you. It's a mindset that changes your overall look on life. Now, this isn't just some woo-woo. There's actual benefits of practicing gratitude, and it's all been backed by research. There was a study that found that people who wrote about gratitude were more optimistic. They felt better about their lives. They even exercised more and had fewer visits to the doctors compared to the people who just focused on the irritations and the neutral events. So this stuff works, which is probably why so many successful people out there preach about gratitude all the time. Oprah Winfrey is a great example. She actually said she attributes much of her success to her gratitude journal. She said, keeping a gratitude journal is the single most important thing I've ever done. Now, I'm no gratitude expert, but my personal gratitude practice just involves writing down every morning three things that I'm grateful for. It could be as simple as a warm cup of coffee, a good night's sleep, having a sportive girlfriend. This small act just sets a positive tone for the rest of the day, reminding me to look out for the good even on tough days. And it's a simple habit, but it really could have a net positive effect on your life, so give it a go. The next one has had a massive impact on my life and it is cut down on drinking alcohol. So a few years back, before I even started this YouTube channel, I challenged myself to quit drinking alcohol for 10 weeks. The goal was just to kind of like break the cycle of drinking every single weekend because I know that's pretty normal for most people. You've got a tough week at work, you come home, you get drunk. 
That's basically how it works. That's what it was like for me anyway. Surprisingly, during that 10 week challenge, I only made it to six weeks, but it was my first attempt, but I broke the habit. It was no longer normal to drink every single weekend. So a little bit after that, I ended up giving up drinking for six months. Now I only really drink on special occasions. And honestly, now it feels more normal not to drink than it does to actually drink. So this change has been monumental to my actual success. When I look back at the periods where like my business has seen the most growth, it was always around the times that I'd stopped drinking or set myself these little challenges. So the impact on my business and my life has been off the scale. And I think that many people don't realize that just having a casual drink on the weekend can affect your entire week. It's not just about the health benefits, it's about the clarity and the focus and the productivity. And I really do believe, I honestly believe this, that alcohol holds many people back more than they realize. So if you find yourself drinking every weekend, maybe just try and take a break for a month and you'll be surprised at how much more you can achieve just in that short amount of time. You'll see an increase in your productivity, you probably feel healthier, you'll have a clearer mindset, and it's all going to contribute to a more successful you. So I dare you just give it a shot, challenge yourself and see the difference that you can make in your life. Next is set massive goals and review them daily. This habit has been another pinnacle in my success. And it's not just about setting goals, it's about setting massive goals, ones that stretch your imagination. And then what you want to do is keep them in your sights every single day. Now, if you're new here, let me just share a little bit about my journey. So I set myself a massive goal of wanting to become a millionaire before the age of 30. At the time when I set that goal, it seemed almost impossible, but I went for it anyway. And then over the next five years, that goal was my North Star. It was guiding every single decision, every single action. And for those who've been following the journey, you'll know that I did eventually reach that goal just just in time, and it was a massive success, and I've documented it on this YouTube channel, but it just goes to show you the importance of setting big goals and just going after them. But the real secret to me actually achieving that goal was accountability. So what you don't wanna do is just write your goals down and leave them on a piece of paper on your desk. You wanna put them out into the world. You wanna let people know about your goals because by doing that, which is what I did when I launched this YouTube channel, it was all around me achieving that goal. I put a public commitment out there that said I was going to do this. It allowed me to show up every single day because I knew that people were watching and they were waiting for me to achieve that goal. So when you do set your goals, I encourage you to share them with the world. You don't necessarily need to start a YouTube channel. You can do if you want, but just start posting it on your personal Instagram or Facebook, or maybe you just want to drop a note in your family WhatsApp group. Just create a layer of accountability that will allow you to actually go after your goals and give you that bit of drive, even when you're not feeling motivated. And if you're looking for a bit of extra inspiration on how to actually write down your goals and go after them, then I highly recommend that you check out the book, Think and Grow Rich. It's all about setting goals and, and having a mindset and dreaming big, and it can really open up your mind to what's possible. Next is disconnect daily. Honestly, when was the last time that you went for more than 30 minutes without looking at a screen or being connected to technology? I mean, I'm guilty of it myself. I wake up to an alarm on my phone. I check my notifications in bed. I then go down the stairs. I ask Alexa to put on some music. I then will get in the ice bath, sometimes wearing my AirPods. And then I'm back into the office, working on my laptop all day. As soon as I take a break from the laptop, I'm probably looking at my phone. And then I'll probably go to the gym. I'm listening to audiobooks in the gym. And then I come home and then I watch TV. And then I go in bed, scrolling on my phone again. And I just repeat the process day in day out. But I think it's really, really important and something which I've started to implement myself is disconnecting from all technology and distractions. Bill Gates has actually got something what he calls Think Week, where he literally just disconnects from the digital world and he just dives into books and thoughts and he's all alone, usually in the woods, and he does it around twice a year and he says it's his secret weapon for clarity and big ideas. Because if you think about it, how can we ever look at the bigger picture if we're constantly glued to screens with technology sending us notifications left, right and center? Now, I know what you're thinking. I can't just disappear for a whole week in my own thoughts. I'm not Bill Gates. And I get it, I can't do that either. But that's why I've adapted it into something which is a bit more doable. So every day, I make the point to try and disconnect. So for me, it's just going for a walk without my phone. It's just me and my thoughts, soaking up the sounds of nature, going for a little stroll, no emails, no notifications. 
So this little daily disconnect, which I like to call it, just gives me the space to breathe, to think about the bigger picture so I can come back to my desk half an hour or an hour later with a clearer mind and I can tackle whatever I need to tackle. And sometimes this is where I find my best ideas when I've been out and I've actually got a bit of fresh air. So here's my challenge to you. Find a way to disconnect daily. It could be going for a walk like me. It could be taking up meditation. It could just be sitting quietly with a cup of coffee. Whatever it is, make it yours. But the key is just to give yourself the space away from screens, away from technology, away from noise. And you'll be amazed at how simple that habit can have a massive impact on your clarity and your creativity. And on that note, thanks for watching. I'm going to go for a little walk. Don't forget to subscribe.